So the cat is out of the bag. There is no longer that black Catholic chick. There is now those black Catholic chicks because Hannah Owens has officially converted to Catholicism. And I'm so excited. Now, before y'all get your rosaries in the bunch, because I know there's some of you out there is going to be like, Listen, I know that, okay? We know that. But we talked about here when I first started my channel, the very first video, about how in the United States that Black people only make about 4 to 5% of Christians who are Catholic. So it's kind of a big deal that she chose the one true faith to be the guiding light to Jesus Christ for her. And I got a lot of flack for this online, guys. Okay, I've been out there duping it out with folks online because of the fact that I am ecstatic and elated for our sister in Christ who has come home. And I want to talk about that today. Why would she choose Catholicism? And really, what does this mean for any of us? Now, as you know, Candace is married to George Farmer who was once Anglican. And I believe when they had gotten married, they had gotten married under the Anglican rite. And that's still very valid within the Catholic Church. And his conversion happened after they were married. Now, I'm not totally clear on Candace's past as far as her religion is concerned. I believe I heard her say that she was raised in a family of Protestants who had a strong Christian background and that she herself may have been someone who definitely does believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now last year, she did this incredible debate between George Farmer, her husband, and Ali Beth Stuckey, who was a Protestant podcaster, and I believe she's Calvinist. And if you ask me, George Farmer completely mocked her up, okay? He mocked her up on theology, and it was a beautiful debate and discussion. And it was at that point that Candace actually shared that she was considering her faith and her biggest obstacle to converting to Catholicism was our veneration for Mary. That's something that she simply could not get her head around. And for so many folks who may be considering converting, that is a major obstacle. Heck, it's even an obstacle for some Catholics, cradle Catholics. I myself have admitted that my relationship with the Blessed Mother hasn't always been very close. But as you can see, honey, I have completely consecrated my life to her as I sit and wear a brown scapular. We're going to talk about that in a whole other video. Now, Candace has not come out yet to fully discuss her reasons and what it was that pulled her home to the Catholic faith. But I want to speculate for a moment on what some of those reasons might actually be. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure you go ahead and do so right now and hit that like button. Heck, hit the dislike button if you don't like this video too. All likes, dislikes, all welcome. And let's hear your story of conversion. Did you convert to the faith? What was some of the biggest obstacles for you to convert? And what actually drew you in? What was it that drew you in to say yes to the one true faith? Go ahead and post your comments down below. You know, I'll tell you what, it's challenging to be in a relationship, particularly a marriage, where you and your spouse are not on the same line when it comes to religion. It's one of those core values that just has to be in place in order for you to have a fruitful and healthy marriage. I think the fact enough that Candace believed in Jesus Christ, or she at least had some Christian values in her, made George Farmer very comfortable with asking her to be his wife and the mother of his children. And this guy is an incredible theologian. Like, he's well-studied. He's got all these degrees in theology. I mean, he's incredible with his understanding of Christianity. And what happens with so many people who decide to go deeper in the church history, deeper in Christian history, all roads lead to Rome. And it begs you to ask yourself, who founded what denomination and what church? And when you see that the lineage of the Catholic Church goes straight to Jesus Christ, for some people, there's no way that they can say no to conversion. But I think the biggest blessing for her marriage and her family is the fact that they're now under the same umbrella when it comes to what they believe. Because within the Catholic faith, Family is everything, and we have a very specific way of looking at family and what that means as far as roles are concerned between men and women, husband and wife, what biblical submission means to each other and to the Lord. And when you're not on the same page about that, man, it just makes everything a lot harder. I think their union poses an interesting conversation for those of us who are single or those of us who may be in relationships with someone who is of another faith. Maybe they're atheist or agnostic. They're Protestant, they may be Jewish or Muslim, and it becomes hard to say whether or not you want to go forward and continue to build a relationship with someone who does not have the same values. 
And to be honest with you, I honestly do not have an answer for you in this video because I think it's so individual. I have a very good friend whom I introduced to you in an earlier video who actually just recently converted to the faith from Islam. And not only that, she and her husband brought their marriage into the church by way of convalidation. He was already a cradle Catholic and he prayed every single day that her heart would open to Jesus Christ and that she would convert. And it wasn't by force. It's like he opened the door and allowed her to step in in her own time. And when she began to learn about Jesus Christ and Catholicism, it just led her straight to the baptismal font, to the Eucharist, to confirmation, and to now her fully embracing her life as a Catholic woman. And that wasn't without battle from her family. And some of you might be facing that right now. They always say you shouldn't date to convert, which I totally believe. But if you choose to date someone or to involve yourself in a relationship with someone or to marry someone who isn't of the faith, you've got to be able to make sure that they can respect your faith, that they will at least raise your children in the faith, and they won't do anything to impede your salvation and what you need to do to get your family to heaven. I mean, the Bible even spells that out where it says that when you are married to someone who is not of faith, that you are to still submit to that person, but you are to stay steadfast and keep praying for them in their salvation and under the grace and glory of God that they convert. That's what you pray for. Now, it's always a lot easier to find someone of the same faith who is Catholic, who understands, I don't know, y'all got to figure it out. But I love how Candace's story with her and George, him having this amazing conversion and then being patient enough to allow his wife to go at her own pace to say yes to Catholicism is such an amazing example. And it's also important for their children to see mom and dad on that united front. Now, a lot of people might say, why Catholicism? Especially as a Black woman, we're not expected to be Catholics. We're expected to be Protestants here in the United States. And it goes back to truth. It goes back to history. It goes back to all roads leading to Rome. When you sit and you study the scriptures and you start to see salvation history and everything that the Lord wants for us spelled out before your eyes and you start to match up where you see these things in various Christian denominations, the Catholic Church has all of it. The Catholic Church was first. Let's not get it twisted. And that's with all due respect to whether you are a Catholic or not and you're watching this video. Go and look at who founded your denomination you are going to be able to trace its roots all the way back to the Protestant Reformation. And the Protestant Reformation was born out of the Catholic Church. And even when we talk about Eastern Orthodoxy, there was a schism between the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church, but the Catholic Church was the one church that they splintered off from. So history leads you back to the one true faith, the rock upon which Jesus Christ had Peter build his church. And that's a beautiful thing. I shared with you guys, I went on a quest myself when I was told that me being Catholic was something that I should not embrace, that the Catholic Church is evil, our priests are pedos, the Vatican is of the devil, and of course, Christianity worships the white Jesus. And so I went on a search to say, hey world, what do you got? If you got something better for me, show me. And I explored other religions, other faiths, and the thing that brought me back to the Catholic Church was the Holy Eucharist. My heart and soul craved the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. And there is no other church on the planet that has that grace. Now, I think the Anglicans might, and that's something that y'all could go ahead and talk about in the comments, but I'm just saying, listen, that was the British monarchy who went off and y'all splintered off in the Catholic Church too, so let's not get it twisted, okay? But if truth is something that you seek, and truth is something that you want, then again, all roads lead to Rome. Now, going to the gripe that Candace had about becoming Catholic was her misunderstanding of our respect and veneration for our Blessed Mother. Here I sit on the eve of the first Saturday of the month, and you know that our Blessed Mother asked us to go ahead and leave that day open to worship our Lord through her Immaculate Heart. And I can say, as someone who was born and raised in the church, that I've always had a respect for our Blessed Mother, but I never had a closeness with her. That closeness didn't come until much later for me. And when that was unlocked, I truly understood my role as a woman in the Christian faith in the world and how to truly live my life as a woman of God with virtue. 
and compassion and charity and care for others. I started to learn exactly what it means to let go of my will, which is super strong. I have really strong will. And to learn how to let it go and let God take the wheel. And our Blessed Mother is my example for that every single day. When I started to build that closeness with her and understand her importance in our church, not only for women, but for men and for everyone, how she continuously points us to Christ and she shows us how to be just the most amazing, virtuous, beautiful creatures that God has ever created, I couldn't say no to her. I consecrated my life to her through the brown scapula. And as a wife and mother for Candace to finally unlock that and hopefully allow herself to grow deeper in that, man, that's going to change her life in ways she does not even realize. It has changed mine in ways that I'm excited to show you guys and to share with you in my next video. But all in all, one of the things I hope for Candace is that the truth is, is that there are not very many of us out there. When I say us, I mean Black women who are openly Catholic in the media space. There's plenty of us out there in the world, behind the camera, watching these videos in other countries and all that stuff. But our presence in the United States isn't as widely seen. So I think it's important for her to have that platform and to open up the world of possibility for our brothers and sisters in faith and other denominations to say, hey, look, they've been telling you that Catholics don't look like us, but here we are. And here's the thing. Candace is a very polarizing figure. You may or may not like her. I used to not be able to stand that woman. In fact, I actually started to like her after I had decided that one day she was going live and I was going to go on to her live broadcast to troll her. And when I started to listen to what she was actually saying and in other videos that she was coming out and talking about her gripe with what we're seeing in our politics in the United States and how she sees the socioeconomic world going for Black people in the United States, I started to actually relate to a lot of what she's saying. Now, I don't always agree with every single thing, but I feel like she makes a lot of sense and she deserves to be heard and listened to. And because she has such a huge platform and such a huge influence, I hope that she wears her faith on her heart openly with like the armor of God that it is. And she starts to share her experience as a woman in faith in Catholicism. I talked about my own journey in faith and how I got here. And if you have not seen that video, I want you to go ahead and check it out right over here. I'll see you over there.